what is important to bear in mind, um, if you look at, at the, the, the name of your, your, your uh, program of study, your bachelor program, it's not called bachelor in cryptography, but bachelor in IT security. So um, it's really a little bit of a question, what is the relationship of crypto and security? Okay, and long story made short is that security is somewhat a much, 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 much bigger topic area notion. And one part of security is cryptography. Okay. And if all secure, if you could achieve security only through cryptography, you wouldn't need a bachelor program. You take this two semester class and you're done and you go in industry and you know, become rich and famous and stuff. This is not true. So <laughs> this is essentially what we're doing here. And of course, there's a follow up course. You know, we, we do introduction to cryptography and later on there's a more theoretical crypto course in your program. But in addition, there are many, many, many aspects you need for building a secure, secure program, including you know, applications such as this. You need, for instance, you need secure software, you need secure operation systems, you need secure hardware, so a lot of aspects that we don't address here to build an overall application. Um, okay, so, but nevertheless, it's, so in, in order to build something secure, you need more than, than crypto, but at the same time, it's also true that there's essentially no security or very, very few security applications that don't have cryptography on board. Do you understand the relationship? So you do, you do need cryptography as you know, an atomic element in order to build security, but you also need stuff around. But if you only take the stuff around without crypto, you cannot build anything secure. Okay, so you always need security. That's why we do that in the first semester, because this is really the foundation of modern security, security design, security engineering. Okay, so this was a lengthy introduction and lengthy classification, right? This is number one is classification. Um, so the next topic is number, oh yeah, so if, if you go back here to our, uh, to our to-do list for today, we're done with the first one, okay? This is this diagram. I warned you, it's not very deep, the material today, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just talking a lot, and I, I, I like to talk, as you can tell. So... Um, the second topic is um, the setup for symmetric cryptography. There are many, many, many things you can do in cryptography, and we do that when we much later when we talk about digital signatures. This is somewhere in April or May. We do that more formally. We talk about security services. Right now, we start with something very, a very simple problem. Simple problem. Namely, communication over. insecure <coughs> channel. Okay, so where do we draw that? Okay, so that means we have two parties and party number A is called Alice. You got it? Party A, Alice, A, Alice. Right? Yeah. And party B is called Bob. Okay, so two parties want to communicate with each other. Communica communication could mean email exchange, right? This is, is real, this is close to real life, right? We, we, we all send an email in our lives, right? So uh, the problem is we are not really sure what's happening in between. So we have a channel in here. And channels nowadays tend to be open channels, which means insecure channels, okay? So... Um, you know, Alice wants to send a message in the channel and Bob wants to, you know, Bob is supposed to receive that. 
Um, what are examples of channels here? This is a transmission media, if you like fancy terminology. So, yeah. What's it? The website is not really the channel. And the website would be somewhere here, but then if you use a website, you're communicating over the... Oh, good, good. Okay, so... Um, channel... Examples... Of course, we all love the Internet. Other examples? Other examples? Yeah. GSM airwaves? Yeah. Airwaves? GSM, there's another air link that you use all the time. Pro probably, m probably at least 50% of you at home. Yeah. UMTS, yeah. WLAN, right. It's Wi Fi, right? There's a whole bunch of other applications. Okay. So all these, all these modern channels have in common, they tend to be open channels. You know, it was an old day in the 70s where you could lease lines. You know, you, you, you could, from the, the Deutsche Post, you could actually lease a link. You know, you could rent one point to point connection and it was more or less closed. But the big success, as we know from the internet, is the, this is an open channel, okay? So the problem is, and I'm going to add stuff to the picture, m m m my request is, don't copy right now. Aufhören mitzuschreiben for five minutes, okay? Because I'm, I'm going to wipe stuff out and this is really hard if you, if you, if you use a, a ballpoint pen. Okay, so here's the problem. Alice sends a message X, you know, which might be an um, email. Bob receives the email, which is exactly what we want to do. The problem is there might be an opponent, Gegner, opponent, opponent, which is often called Oscar in the literature. And Oscar might also get access to that. You know that you can trace the email, you can see where the email, the connection point of the email as it's being routed through the internet. And this is weird stuff happening, even if you send an email from you know, Bochum to Cologne or something nearby, it could happen that this is not, not even staying within Germany, but sometimes uh, leaving the country, sometimes even leaving Europe and, you know, some kind of wild routing of internet packages. So in general, we don't know what's happening on the channel here, whether anybody wiretaps. Wi wiretaps is, you know, to listen in, listening. So in order to prevent that, and that's the basic idea of cryptography, or in order to overcome the alternative would be Alice takes the message and does, uses some kind of other channel, such as, you know, personal delivery of, of, of the message, you know, with a, with a courier or courier. Of course, you can do that, but it's, you know, it's, you have to buy a DB ticket and everything is really slow. So we, we, we prefer to sending a, 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 a emails. So in order to overcome this problem now that Oscar can read our messages, um, we can use cryptography, okay? And the basic idea is that we, at this point here, and this is why you weren't allowed to copy, you introduce um, encryption on the, on the sender side. You encrypt, okay. What is encryption? Some kind of mathematical formula which turns X the plain text in some kind of cipher text, Schiffrat in German. Um, and to Oscar, Oscar suddenly doesn't get X anymore. Oscar only sees Y, and the nice thing about good cryptography, to Oscar this looks like random bits. So he sees, in, in, in the case of email encryption, he suddenly sees random characters. Okay, this is exactly what we want. And then on the receiving side, of course, you know what comes out of the channel, which comes out of the internet, which comes out of the airwaves, maybe, is, you know, scrambled messages. So Bob wants to recover that, so he has to decrypt with the decryption function D, okay? And then, you know, D transforms Y, this ra you know, seemingly random string of bits, into something nice and read readable, namely X here. Okay, so that's a basic setup of... Um, crypto systems. Um, now comes the uh, $64,000 $64, question. Um, 
So here we have an encryption function, right? We have a decryption function. What do you think? Is it a good idea to keep those functions secret? You know how we do that, or should we make that public? What is your gut feeling? Any? Yeah? See? Yeah. So he's saying we should keep that open. So he, we should tell everybody how we encrypt and how we decrypt. Who has a different opinion? Who thinks it's a stupid idea? Yeah. Yeah. He said this is a stupid idea. If everybody knows how we encrypt and decrypt, Oscar also knows how we decrypt and he can read it. Okay. And these are two interesting opinions. Yep. We, yeah, except we don't have a key in here, but this is, of course, this is the answer, right? But I pretend you're really dummies, but you're not. Okay, you, you, what, what, you had the same? Ah, oh, this is far too advanced. This is stuff for January. Okay, so we, we're not there yet. Yeah. But good idea, good idea. Okay, so we have kind of conflicting opinions here. You know, some of you say, let's keep that open. You know, let's make these algorithms public. You know, let's put them in my book. You know, let's put it on Wikipedia so everybody knows that. And then, of course, the counter argument is this is a really stupid idea. If everybody knows how to decrypt, Oscar could decrypt and do that, right? And so, and then if, if you look at the history of cryptography, cryptography started in, I don't know when it really started, but there have been early signs of cryptography 2000 before Christ in e Egyptian times. You know, there were hieroglyphs, hieroglyphen, and they were like the normal hieroglyphs, but they were also encrypted hieroglyphs, right? So this is, crypto is really old. And what people did for essentially until, 19, until the early 1970s of you know, the last century. So un, un, you know, until 40 years ago, people believed that it's a really good idea to keep those functions secret, right? And it turned out it's a really stupid idea, okay? Don't do that. It's very counterintuitive. So from, from Gefühl here, we, we would assume that it's a good idea to keep that secret. And that's what human mankind did for 4,000 years. They believed you get more secure systems, of course, you know, seemingly of course, if E and D are secret. And now it's a big, big question. If, you know, if, if you've been asleep, wake up. Now comes one of the important discussions. You know, it take, takes us about two minutes. Why is it a good idea to keep E and D public here? Why should we only use public encryption functions? Yeah. Exactly. Because, yeah, so, so she said... This is the only way of knowing that the functions are secure. They, and, and, and now we, we get into some kind of a an, 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 an more lengthy discussion. There's something very, very specific, peculiar, speciel about cryptography, which is not true for almost all other engineering and scientific disciplines. Normally, if you have an, if an, if as an engineer, a computer scientist, you have a task such as building a car that only uses three liters of gasoline liter auto, right? You should build that. So what you do, you sit down and you build your engines in your very aerodynamic, uh, you know, overall car and everything, and then you go on the road, and if the car consumes 2.9 liters, you know, you've won, you know, and your boss loves you, and if, if the car still, you know, uses 6 liters, you get fired, right? So you know what I'm saying? So it's pretty clear normally when you achieved your goal and when not. And this does not hold for crypto, okay? What I usually do at this point, I do a Gedanken experiment. So I say, here's the deal. And it's only a Gedanken experiment. It's not a real experiment. I say, okay, so your task is design a crypto system, okay? And you have, I give you 48 hours, and whoever designs a really secret crypto system gets 10,000 euros from me, okay? Saturday, Saturday, 1 o'clock, okay? So what will happen, 150 people will, you know, Run to the, and then you don't have internet access, so you have to come up with it by yourself, okay? Just paper and pencil. So I can tell you on Saturday, I will have, you know, 150 people knocking on my door, you know, each has really nice casting papier, right? And they explain all this really great unbreakable crypto system, okay? 